So what we wrote in English in the previous uh, video, we'll try to convert it mathematically. So again, uh, this is my F1 axis, my F2 axis. This is my F1 dash axis on which my variance, my variance of my projected points, because if I project all my points, right? If I project each of these points onto F1 dash, the variance will be very high, right? And I want to find F1 dash. For simplicity, let me, let me call my F1 dash as U1. Okay, because this is what you will typically find in most lecture notes or in most textbooks. So I'll use the same terminology here. Let me call it U1 dash. Now that, that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is I really don't care about finding this whole line. I only care about finding this direction. Right? Because once I know the direction, I can project any point on this direction, right? So what I care about is finding a direction. And we know that we represent di directions using unit vectors. So what is a unit vector? I'll, I'll make my u1 a unit vector. And what is a unit vector? Unit vector basically means that the length of this vector equals to one. Okay, because I really don't care. I only want to find this direction. That's all I care about. Okay, so this is what my u1 actually is. My u1 is the direction. My u1 is the direction, is the direction on which if I project each of my points, the variance will be maximal. Right? Let, let's let's try to build the map around it. So uh, let, let me just draw a much more simplified system here. Let's assume this is my F1, this is my F2. Let's assume this is my direction U1. Okay. Of course, this direction I can draw a line. Okay, this is my direction U1. So let's assume I have a point here. Let's call it XI. Okay, XI, a point can be represented as a vector. If I want to project this XI, let's assume this point. This projected point here is xi dash. So what am I saying here? xi dash is nothing but projection of xi onto u1. Okay. Let's let's just define. Let's just call it the projection of xi on u1. Let's call it xi dash. Right. So now my data set, actually given data set, is xi. Let's just ignore yi's right now i equals to 1 to n. I'm creating a new data set from this called d dash of xi dash such that my xi dash is nothing but projection of xi on u1. Right. So now let's go and see. So my xi dash is projection of xi on u1. And we learned in the linear algebra, in the linear algebra series of videos, we learned that this is nothing but u1 dot xi divided by length of u1 square we just learned it right we just we learned this in the projection when we understood what is a projection what is a unit vector and ideas like that now we know that u1 is a unit vector which means this value is one which means my xi dash is nothing but u1 transpose xi this is how i can i can this is the this is how i can represent my dot product right this is one of the one of the interpretations of dot product right we saw this again in linear algebra chapter so each of my xi dash now is nothing but u1 transpose xi. So given any point xi, I can convert into xi dash using u1 dash. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that we should remember is if I'm given x bar, let x bar be the mean vector, the mean vector of xi's. Okay. I can multiply that with u1 transpose and get xi sorry x dash bar this is the mean of xi dash i equals to 1 to n so i can get the mean vector for xi dash by just taking the mean vector of xi and multiplying and doing a dot product with u1 okay so this is important we'll we'll, we'll see why to use this how to use this right so what is our whole task? Let's write it mathematically. Our task is, we are saying that u1 is the direction. We want to find, find u1, find u1. Okay, let me write it much more clearly here instead of, instead of this. Find u1 such that the variance of points xi projected onto u1, again i going from 1 to n, is maximal or maximum okay this is a task right this is the problem that we want to solve 
So first let's solve this problem. What is the variance of this? This is nothing but, okay, let me write it carefully. This is nothing but variance of, okay, u1 transpose xi equals to 1 to n by from simple definition, right? What am I doing here? I'm just replacing this with this from definition, nothing very fancy. Okay, now let's go back. Let's go back and understand this. What does this mean? Let's let's try to write it mathematically. What is the formula for variance? It is the average. It's the average. This part is nothing but it's the average dispersion of each of the points from the mean, right? That's what variance is. Uh, squared, of course, of course, squared. Okay, so let me just write it for you first. It is u1 transpose xi minus u1 transpose x bar square. Now you might ask, why did you write this? So what is this? This is xi dash and this is mean of xi dash. This is the formula for variance, isn't it? This is the simple formula for variance. Now remember your projection, when you do ui transpose xi, you should remember that u1, u1 transpose multiplied by xi. xi is a column vector, right? Which means it has n rows and one column. What about this? This has one row and n columns. By multiplying it, you're going to get a scalar. You're going to get one scalar, right? So these are actually numbers. Even though they're represented as vectors, this product results in one scalar value, not a vector. Okay, so the mean, everything works out well. Now we know, so when we started off, we said X, our original data set has been column standardized. So what does column standardization mean? It means my mean vector is at zero, is at origin. Because for each column, because I've already standardized the data, right? Which means my mean vector will be at zero. Which means if my mean vector is at zero, this is where things will get interesting. This will become zero, right? My mean vector literally becomes zero, right? So now, now, now let's look at the formula. Now, what is variance of my xi dash i equals to one to n is nothing but it's the average i equals to one to n, right? U1 transpose xi square. Now let's write, let's write the actual mathematical objective that we want to find, okay? So I'll write, a, I'll write something called an optimization function. We'll learn more, at op, more about optimization little later and how to solve optimization problems, okay? For now, let's write it. Let, let me explain what it is right now. So what do we want to find? We want to maximize the variance. What is variance here? We want to maximize this term u1 transpose xi square, right? This is nothing but this is the variance, right? Okay, we want to find u1 because xi's are already given to us. Our xi's are part of our data matrix. This is already given to us. What is it that we have to find? We have to find u1, okay? We have to find u1 such that this is maximized. Sorry, sorry. So this, this is the problem that we have to solve. Again, sorry, again, I'm not, I'm not able to draw it properly. Okay, let me just put a bounding box around it. But there is one constraint here, such that my u1 is a unit vector, which means u1 transpose u equals to one, right? Which is nothing but norm of u1 square, right? So let, let me reread this. Let me try to explain this step by step. It's always important to understand optimization problems. We want to maximize the variance of xi dash, right? This is nothing but, this is nothing but variance of xi dash, right? Since xi's are already given to us as part of a data matrix, we already have all the xi's, right? We want to maximize the variance of xi dash and we want to find u1. We want to find that direction. We want to find u1 or the direction that maximizes the variance. And here we are putting a constraint. So this is called this is called the objective. This is called the objective of an optimization problem. Of an optimization problem. And this is called constraint. 
we won't let u to be any value we want u sorry we won't let u1 be any value we want u1 to be a unit vector okay this says that u1 is a unit vector because we want it to represent a direction right see if i if i just leave u1 to be anything right it can just my, make my u1 vector infinity isn't it if i make my u1 vector infinity comma infinity or very large values this will always be maximal right multiplying even a small value with a very large value will make it large isn't it so i don't want any u1 i want my u1 to be a unit vector this is called an optimization problem this is called an optimization problem okay we will learn about solving optimization problems later when we learn about uh, after we learn a couple of machine learning techniques and i promise you i will teach you how to solve this problem we will revisit this optimization problem and solve it when we learn optimization for now since i don't want to divert and go and teach you whole of optimization just in the interest of not diverting i will solve this problem much more i'll tell you the solution to this problem without telling you how to without telling you how i got there but you can trust me there i promise you i will solve this problem for you later when we learn about optimization when we learn some basic calculus remember i'll teach you the basics of what differentiation means we, i promise you we'll revisit this and solve this problem but for, for a while for a for a first few techniques what i'll do is i'll just explain you the mathematical optimization problem that we are solving right here we are solving a mathematical optimization problem how to solve it and all i'll teach you later right now i'll explain you what the problem is how to solve it i promise you i'll surely revisit it i'm sorry for having to repeat it so many times but i think if i tell if i don't tell you how to solve it i'll not be doing justice to you i don't want to water down the math that's what, that's what i told you multiple times right? i really really don't want to water down the math okay but right now this is where we will stop and we'll learn we'll directly go to the solution to this to this optimization problem how we arrive at that solution we will learn in the optimization section